Everyone, remain calm. Yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and screaming. Somebody talk to me, what is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello and welcome to the 58th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we've got some news, a longer audio segment with clips from an impersonator, as well as Neil deGrasse Tyson defending the choices in Jurassic World, and an absolutely hilarious synopsis of Jurassic Park by Aaron Kleiber. We'll follow that up with another great listener segment, and stay tuned to the end of the podcast for the winners of our DVD giveaway contest. So, I'm sure you noticed there was no new episode last week. I know, it's the first missed week since the start of the podcast. I guess I kind of dropped the ball, but I decided to take a week off at the very last minute. Uh, Don't worry, though. We've got a ton of great episodes lined up with even more friends from the Jurassic community. So, stay tuned for those. But for now, let's get this episode started off with a bit of Jurassic news from around the world. 18 minutes and your company catches up on 10 years of research. Access me, program. Access me, security. These pictures were taken in hospital in Costa Rica 48 hours ago. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but look. I boy, my head being right all the time. But today, I guarantee it. The first Jurassic Park in concert date from Film Concerts Live has been announced for the states. Now, whether it's the actual first date in the U.S. or it's just the first announced date is not yet known at this point. So the experience is starting off in San Antonio, Texas at the Majestic Theater featuring the San Antonio Symphony playing along with the film. Now, the first showing is February 17th at 8 p.m., followed by two showings on the 18th at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. I'm sure this is some awesome news for our listeners in the San Antonio area, and you'll definitely have to let us know if you're going to those shows. I'll post a link in our show notes to Film Concerts Live. The 2017 Class of the Hollywood Walk of Fame has been announced, and Chris Pratt is heading up that list, along with Dwayne Johnson, Hugh Laurie, Tyra Banks, Ice Cube, Ava Longoria, and many more, Chris Pratt will get his own star on the Walk of Fame. In his relatively quick rise to fame with Parks and Recreation, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Jurassic World as his major hits, the date has yet to be set, so stay tuned for more information on the free-to-attend Hollywood event in the near future. Head over to JurassicOutpost.com where they've uncovered a few great treats from Jurassic World. The first bit is a batch of great images from Seth Engstrom who did a bunch of great concept images for Jurassic World. In the image set, you'll find some intriguing missed opportunities from the Pteranodon sequence, some extra rampaging from the Indominus Rex, and some alternate takes from the Innovation Center. It's an amazing set of images, so I'll make sure to include a link to Jurassic Outpost's article and Seth Engstrom's blog. The second bit is a set of previous videos featuring some slightly different takes on the Raptor introduction, a pretty spot-on take of the final battle, and much more. I think it's really interesting to see how they worked out these scenes beat for beat, as well as how they brought them to life. These are definitely some videos you'll want to check out, and if you haven't already, head to our show notes to find the links to the pictures as well as the videos. Victoria from Victoria's Cantina announced a very special project that she has lined up, and it's something I think all of us will be very interested to follow. I'll read straight from the press release. Toy documentary to examine historical and cultural impact of Kenner Jurassic Park toy line. June 16th, 2016. Victoria's Cantina Productions is proud to announce Jurassic Toy, the impact of Kenner's Jurassic Park line. This collaborative documentary will explore the storied history of the brainchild between the defunct toy company Kenner and Universal Studios licensing. Kenner, once the world's industry-leading toy company behind Star Wars, Superpower Collections, and Ghostbusters, broke new ground with their Jurassic Park product line in 1993. The cultural impact left by this line is vast and nostalgically looked upon by millennials who once created their own adventures with Kenner's Man vs. Dinosaur lineup. 
To augment its historical and cultural perspective, Jurassic Toy will feature testimony from ex-Kenner employees, select cast and crew from the Jurassic Park films, toy industry experts, and the Jurassic Park fan community. That keeps the memory of this storied toy line living. Jurassic Toy is scheduled for release in 2017. So there you have it. I absolutely cannot wait to see this documentary progress because I... You know, as you heard in our last episode, people like me, Aaron Beyer, and so many more absolutely love the original toy line from Kenner. I'll have an article up on the website with this information and a little bit more from Victoria. So stay tuned, and we'll make sure to bring you the information as quickly as possible. Uh, Oh, there it is. There it is. Explore the park like never before. Fly around Isla Nubla and visit park attractions. Get up close and personal with our dinosaurs. And experience Jurassic World the way it was meant to be experienced. Jurassic World 3D Project. Download it today for free. Oh, here, fire! Do not fire! God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Boy, do I hate being right all the time. We're gonna have to drop the can! Are you ready? One, two, come on! First, this week in the audio segment, we'll hear from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who typically attempts to break apart science fiction films for their inaccuracies. But this time, he might have actually sided with Jurassic World. Take a listen. Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. Crossbreeding dinosaurs into super dinos? Is this madness? It's what happens all the time. All the life forms that exist today are super versions capable of surviving in conditions that previous species could not. That's why they're extinct. So crossbreeding, this is is nature. Nature does that. And what does super dinosaur mean? Whatever dinosaur preceded T-Rex, we would like to think that T-Rex is a super version of that, okay? We, maybe we are super versions of rhesus monkeys, all being primates. So, so I, there's no reason to uniquely fear a super version of something. So yeah, I, you know, I'm kind of surprised to hear him stand up for Jurassic World in a way. Typically, like I said earlier, he likes to tear down any kind of scientific movie that he can. But I'm glad to hear him stand up for the scientific aspects of Jurassic World. I've included a link to the video in our show notes. This next clip is a voice impression from Troy Baker over on YouTube. Let's see if you know who he's impersonating. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very, uh, for, for you um, to, to, to sit in a, in a chair. Chairs are interesting because they, uh, <laughs> they have four uh, legs, but you, you only have two. So you're better than chairs. Uh, because you, you can say you can say just one two, and 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 the, <laughs> the the chair needs four. So yeah, I'm sure you figured it out. Jeff Goldblum, his voice is so unique; it's kind of obvious to tell. Um, now, did you think it was a spot-on impression, or was it a little off? What do you think? Hit us up on Twitter to let us know. I'll include a link to the video in our show notes. This last clip is absolutely awesome. Thanks to listener Pierce, who you'll hear from again in the listener segment in a second. Uh, He pointed this one out on Twitter. This is an awesome video where comedian Aaron Kleiber watched Jurassic Park for you. I think you'll really enjoy this. It's about eight minutes long. Don't skip it. You'll regret it. I gotta work on my raptor. No, that's all I got. That's the raptor sound. It's gonna sound like a parrot. Shoot her! Shoot her! Jurassic Park! Oh! Raptor style. Hey, it's Aaron Kleiber. Watch it for you. Let's open it up. The dinosaur DNA. It's like an old Milwaukee bottle. What is it, Jurassic Park? That is a buck. That doesn't look very scary. Then a helicopter comes in and ruins their whole dig. Who's this rich idiot? Old man digging through their fridge, eating all their good pickles. Oh, hello. I own an island. Hey, you guys want to go to an old man's island? Yeah, let's go to his island. Do we have to get naked? Maybe. Okay, free vacation. Oh. Hello, Newman. Shaving cream can. And he also puts shaving cream on a piece of pie that somebody's gonna eat. That's messed up. Jeff Goldblum, he was in every movie then. Um, so you dig up dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's excellent. Ah! <laughs> 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 
Welcome to Jurassic Park. All right now, we're gonna have the boat leaving at 4 p.m. <laughs> Is that a dinosaur? Uh, did you say you have a T-Rex? We've got a T-Rex. Why, hello, John. Hi, I'm Mr. DNA. I'm your blood. First off, what we did is we dug up some dinosaur stuff. And then we drilled some holes in it. And then we made them all girls. So next year, guess what's gonna be at Jurassic Park? Lilith Fair. <laughs> push, push, come on, little one. Push, push. They remember. They remember everything. The grandkids! <laughs> Kids, you're gonna mess up everything! Hey! Y'all better get on that boat at 4 p.m. Dinosaur tour, they get in the state-of-the-art Jeeps on the electro track. All right, we're gonna start the tour. Hold on to your butts. You're 11 years old, you're like, oh my God, I hope they eat this goat and there's blood all over the place. He's gonna eat the goat. Excellent, yeah. Um, uh, do you uh, have dinosaurs on this dinosaur tour? <laughs> Put your hand. And the water, you see, the water pours on it. So there's no no T-Rex, doesn't even show up. Now they're just jumping out of the cars because there's a half-dead Triceratops. I wanna see the droppings. That is one big pellet. Okay, everybody, the tour is over. Newman's supposed to be debugging the system. Oh, does anyone want anything salty? A soda? Anything? Getting the embryos. Well, his shaving cream. Turn the fences off. Put on the night vision goggles. Goat's gone. Look at your water. No, look at the water. No, the water. The water. Is that like a, a do-it-yourself Pinterest earthquake detector? T-Rex is here. Like, oh, give me the flashlight. No. <laughs> yippee ki -yay. And then Jeff Goldblum wants to be a hero with his shirt open and hard juice sexy. Black rim glasses, curly freaking Hall and Oates hair. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pushes the truck over the wall. Where did the wall come from? Continuity error. This movie's horrible. They're a little bit farther away from the goat. What's the elevation? levels on this T-Rex pen. Now we go back to Newman. He's escaping through the rain in a Jeep. He gets stuck. <laughs> like a Teletubby or something. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Play fetch. Drops the shaving cream. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> we gotta get up in the tree and get Tim out. Truck falls through the tree. Buster Keaton where the house falls on him. The car is... <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Oh, classic. Uh, faster. We uh, must go faster. Uh, well, you are obsessed with fat ladies. They climb up a big tree for bedtime stories. Sounds like Miles Davis on acid. And then the kid starts telling jokes. What do you call a blind dinosaur? I don't know, a Stevie Wondersaurus? And she's like, she's like, Pfft. Ah, sneezes boogies on a girl. Ah, stupid girl. Evolution sped up and there's a full nest of dinosaur eggs. Dinosaur omelet. Then we go back to the computer room and there's a really great shot of Jeff Goldblum like laying on a table with his like chest hair out. Um, uh, come over here. Uh, he looks like Michael Jackson laying with the tiger in the Thriller album. <laughs> Shh, I got an idea, everybody. Why don't we shut the system down? <laughs> Hold on to your butts. We can get the power and the phones back. All you have to do is walk across the park past the raptor, the raptor cage that's all ripped open. That's all you have to do. You have to sneak past like six, seven raptors. No big whoop. Quit being a wiener. We're being hunted. <sighs> Timmy gets zapped <laughs> and he dies. The raptor in the shed and Samuel Jackson's arm is in there. I told y'all to go to the boat. Remember, they attack from the sides. Clever girl. And the CPR brings Timmy back to life, so that's fine. Why do you do CPR? Everyone always wakes up like this. <coughs> what was that buffet of food for everyone? Like, where, for who? And Peter, just imagine it, and then it's real. And they, what is that? It's like a fake buffet in North Korea when the guests come. <laughs> <laughs> they bark, they're like, gonk, 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 gonk. They sound like gonk droids, like gonk, gonk. <laughs>
Oh, the other one's trapped in there. Unless they can open doors. And he does open doors and comes in and cooks a nice creme brulee. They trap one in the cooler. Now this 13 year old girl is hacking this computer system. Where did she learn how to do this? On AOL Online from a free CD? The adults are holding the Raptor back against the door. All we want to do is reach the shotgun and Timmy ain't doing nothing. Oh, cool, Sith. You're hacking like they said in that new Wired magazine. So then they gotta climb into the vents, John McClane style. Hey, come to my island. We'll have a few laughs. We'll get eaten by a T-Rex. Climb up onto the T-Rex bones and it crumbles everywhere. Now they're surrounded by velociraptors. The T-Rex comes out of nowhere. Shh. How did you not see T-Rex in the same room as room you're in? <laughs> Beer falls. Um, um, after some careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. That's it. Thanks for watching Jurassic Park. Well, you didn't watch Jurassic Park. I watched it for you. Like, share, comment. I am so happy that Pierce pointed this out for me. Aaron completely nails everything that is great, wrong, and hilarious about this film. You absolutely need to give it a watch over on YouTube, so I'll make sure to include the link on our website. In the meantime, go give him a follow over on Twitter, at Aaron Kleiber. That's at A-A-R-O-N. K-L-E-I-B-E-R. Don't forget to check out the links to everything you heard here today in the audio segment. I'm not a computer nerd. I prefer to be called a hacker. Aren't you supposed to be a genius or something? I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Dendron. Incorporating all the latest technologies. We shouldn't be here. And there's five dinosaurs. How many Sarahs do you think are on this island? We got a few more listener interactions to go over this week, so let's check them out. This first one is from Jesse on our voicemail line. Let's take a listen. Hey, Brad, this is Jesse from uh, Southern California. Just want to say um, good job on the podcast. It's pretty awesome. It's cool to hear other Jurassic Park enthusiasts, but um, I could go off for days and days about Jurassic Park. It's the best movie ever. The whole franchise is awesome. I, I think every movie is great in its own way. I don't look at one better than the other one. But anyways, I just had an idea that I commented on Instagram, but I just kind of wanted to call in and, and uh, talk about it a little bit more. But um, Funko, the company that makes, you know, the pop vinyls that are really popular, they haven't made anything Jurassic Park, and I think that they're really missing out on the big market there. And they could even make, you know, a series of four for each movie. Um, my four, and only if they did each movie, um, I would like to see, you know, for the original Jurassic Park, I would like to see, of course, um, John Hammond, you know, because he's the creator and, and kind of the, the the start of this whole thing. And then um, I would say Ellie, who would be dinosaurs, which would be the original, you know, T-Rex, you know, that also makes their appearance in Jurassic World. And either Nedry or maybe the Dilophosaurus or – actually, I think I would rather see – the Brachiosaurus, since that was like the first magical moment of, you know, you know, a dinosaur on screen, you know, a full dinosaur that you get to see. And and um, so I think that would be cool. For The Lost World, I would like to see, of course, Ian Malcolm and Sarah Hardy. And then maybe the 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 baby um, Tyrannosaurus, you know, with the little bandage around its leg. And then um, and on the other side, I would like to see preferably – um, either the one of the compies, you know, because the movie did kind of start out with the compy, or um, I, I know we, would, we wouldn't want to rehash the the Tyrannosaurus again, but either so either the compies or maybe even the Stegosaurus, since that's you know one of the other you know magical moments of that of that movie. Uh, for the third movie, I would like to see, of course, Alan Grant and then Billy, and then. Um, for the dinosaurs, of course, um, you know, the Spinosaurus, as much as people hate on it, you know, I think that dinosaur is awesome. And then also, um, either one of the, one of the Tyrannodons or maybe even the Velociraptor with the, with the feathers on its head. And then for the new movie, of course, Owen and, um, Claire and the Irex and preferably blue since I, I see that that's pretty much everyone's favorite from the movie. Um, yeah, but like I said, I just have an idea for that. I was thinking maybe you could talk to the other, maybe the other Jurassic Park podcast or even the 
the of the dinosaur podcast that you, um, you keep in touch with. If we could all get together, maybe agree on a day, and everybody, all the listeners, um, everybody would just head over to the Funko like Twitter page and just start, you know, giving them messages all on one day, you know, to to supply us with some Jurassic Park, you know, pop vinyls, and then head over to their Instagram, start flooding their comments there, and then head over to Facebook and do the same thing. Basically, just get their attention and let them know, hey, you know, there's a community of of Jurassic Park fans that they want to see, you know, pop vinyls, you know, and and hopefully that will at least, you know, wake them up and and start to see that there's a market there. I I, I don't know why it's not a market, you know, Jurassic World, the whole franchise is is out of control, you know, there's so many fans, but, um, but yeah, I was just going to say if maybe we could get that as an idea, get it together and see if maybe we can all come together and everybody can just send you know emails or whatever it's got to be and they just get this barrage and maybe somebody will you know a light will turn on and in, in, in that company over there and they'll and they'll get those out to us and i think that would be awesome so anyways yeah um, i just wanted to share a little bit about that and um that's something that i would like to see i know the toys have been kind of subpar you know for everybody but i think the, the the pop vinyls are more like a collectible thing and that would be pretty awesome to be able to get those um series anyways um Keep it up with the the podcast. Keep them coming. It's awesome. Um, I can't wait every Monday to hear a new podcast. So we'll see you, man. Thanks. Hey, Jesse, great voicemail. And I'm totally on board with this campaign. The only problem is I don't believe that Funko actually has the license to make them. Uh, Now, that is really the only possible holdup I feel like at this moment, um, seeing as they've made basically every other property known to man. I know so far a lot of people have reached out. And they keep saying that there's no update on the Jurassic Park Funko line. Um, It's such a shame. We all know that there is a huge market. I'm sure Funko knows there's a huge market, and they probably just need that license to actually make it. Maybe we need to push our efforts in a different direction to get these made. Not to Funko, but maybe to Universal's licensing. Uh, Funko knows that we want them, but we have to let others know that the license should be given to Funko for this amazing opportunity. As for what I'd like to see, obviously the ones you mentioned are really amazing. Um, and I think it's so tough to choose from the first film, seeing that all the characters are so iconic. But I definitely want a Grant and a Malcolm. Uh, from the Lost World, I really want Roland Timbo. Uh, maybe even Billy from JP3. And definitely Owen, Claire, Blue, and the Indominus uh, combo from Jurassic World. Uh, maybe even Mizrani. I think he would be an awesome character to have as a Funko. Uh, but maybe uh, maybe I'm a bit greedy. I don't know. But for sure, I would like to uh, actually have not the typical. I mean, I like the typical Funko Pops, but I'd actually like the, the Funko Vinyl Idols. Uh, I like those even more than the other ones because they're a bit taller. They have more detail. I think they're pretty cheap. Um, and they have a great quality and size for that amount of money. So I'd really like to see these ones made in the future. Hopefully they can do that. Thanks again, Jesse, and I can't wait to hear more from you soon. This next one is an email from Travis. He says, Recently on the show, the original T-Rex lifespan was brought into question. As Jurassic World was located on Isla Nublar, the original island, it was indicated that this was the wreck seen in 1993's Jurassic Park. With genetic tampering to accelerate the animal's growth rate, how would an adult animal still be alive over 20 years later? If the animal ages at something like four times its natural growth rate, it could easily be 100 in dinosaur years, however long it took to reach maturity combined with the 20 plus years between films. How can we make this gel with our quasi-realistic in-universe headcanon. Can we find a way to suspend our disbelief? An answer I can accept comes straight from the films. These dinosaurs are engineered and would be vastly different if they were genetically pure. But this has allowed Wu and his colleagues to adjust things to their liking. And lifespan would definitely be an essential factor to address. Hammond would have wanted the most bang for his buck. He spared no expense to get what he wanted. In the films, it is stated that they used a variety of animal DNA to fill the gaps in the original chain and provided the desired physical characteristics. Everything from West African frogs, allowing them to spontaneously change gender, to cuttlefish, giving the Indominus some of its unique abilities. There are a variety of animals with much lengthier lifespans than humans. And if their genes were spliced in, I can be comfortable with the Rex still kicking around Nublar, even with that accelerated growth rate. Here are a few examples. 
Tataris, small horned reptiles that can live in excess of 200 years. Galapagos giant tortoises, lifespan of about 190 years. Bowhead whales, as long as 245 years. Arctic Islandica clams, over 400 years. Wu loves getting creative with these things, and there's no doubt in my mind that he addressed this somehow. Thanks for such a continually great podcast. It quickly became my favorite, and I've been listening to a wide variety over the past three years. Travis. Hey, Travis, I'm so glad you sent in this email because I really think it explains a lot. You know, as you and many others have heard from the prior episode, um, I was certainly stuck on how the original Rex could be alive, strong, and continuing to thrive after all these years. Um, But I think you found the key. It's so simple. DNA. It was right there all along. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we inserted these uh, genes, you know, from a tortoise or whales or or the other animals that you mentioned to expand their lifespan. You know, you stated it perfectly. They wanted to get the most bang for their buck. We obviously know that they focused on the cost of these beasts, so they would certainly want to ensure that they aren't being killed off way too quickly. Um, If they inserted those genes, they could potentially keep these dinosaurs in front of the spectators, you know, for decades. You know, I would say Wu was smart enough to ensure that these genes were inserted, but that means he'd have to be smart enough to not use these genes that cause them to change sex in a single sex environment or, you know, camouflage or evade detection of some sort. You know, he's a smart dude. But he's also a little bit blind. So who knows? I could certainly see this being a possibility, so I don't really mind calling it headcanon for my own sake. Now, Travis here is an awesome artist and customizer, so I wanted to point you all in his direction to check out his great stuff. So head over to Instagram and check out his profile, at Travis Stevens Nerdcrafts, where he has a great collection of all his work. He recently did an awesome set of uh, Lost World style Jeeps that more replicate the film than what uh, the toy line produced. They're really, really awesome. I really like them. Head over to Instagram, like I said, to check them out. I'll also include a link in our show notes to make it easier for you. Thanks again, Travis. This next voicemail is from Scorpio Dino 16. Let's take a listen. Uh, hi, this is Scorpio Dino 16 on Twitter. Um, first of all, I hope you're having a good day. You know, I've loved the podcast lately. I loved your Lost World. I'm, I'm sorry, not Lost World. I loved your Jurassic Park tour list with, um, I forget who it was. I'm sorry, Tom. Um, uh, so I have three quick questions for you. Um, one, what other film series do you love? It's not really JP related. Just like, what other film series do you love? Mine, mine are Star Wars and Back to the Future, like, Besides Jurassic Park, two. Um, what's your favorite Jurassic non-Jurassic Park dinosaur movie? Mine would have to be Land Before Time. Um, and in fact, I'm about to watch The Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms, old Harryhausen movie. And and then finally, a Jurassic Park related question: What do you think is like the most terrifying moment in Jurassic Park, or the most terrifying Jurassic Park related moment in in the entire franchise and any of the expanded universe? For, for me, it's probably, it's not even a moment. Just, I'll link you this tweet. It was this tweet. Um, I've seen this picture before by Aunt, posted by AMC when they were doing like a Jurassic Park marathon. Um, I'll like link it to you after I, I'm done giving this message. And it showed a picture of the raptor animatronic pushed up against the cage door that, you know, the mesh door that Ellie closes in the power plant. And like the way its hands are like curved, they kind of look like devil's hands. <laughs> and, it's really, really just terrifying. And I've also been thinking, like, this would be pretty scary, too, of just a moment where the Indominus Rex is sort of, like, young, very, like, very, very insignificant in terms of its comprehension of what's going on around it. And all of a sudden, like, I guess somebody, like, pokes it with a stun prod and it lashes out and actually, like, gets a big gash on his arm or something, and they haul the guy away, and in that moment, it kind of just thinks to itself, I can hurt them. Like, you know, I can actually do damage to them instead of them to me. And that's when it starts playing its escape, sort of, and building up the Jurassic World. But j- just a thought. I'm sorry if I kind of ranted there. Um, keep up the great work with the podcast. Really, I've been really enjoying it lately. Um, and uh, have a great day. 
Bye. Hey, man, thank you again for those kind words about the podcast. I always really, really appreciate it. It's so great to hear that. Um, And that toy episode was certainly a marathon, but it was also full of love for the original Kenner toys. Um, If anyone listening hasn't heard that, go back, listen to episode 57 for a full dive into that amazing toy line. But um, as for what other films that I enjoy, Back to the Future is right up there with Jurassic Park. I know. Blasphemy to everybody listening here, but Back to the Future is an absolutely perfect film, and I see zero flaws in it, so it's really it's really kind of struggles between one and two for me. And I actually just went to go see the Back to the Future um, live in concert this past weekend. It was so awesome, and for anybody looking to see the Jurassic Park one that's coming out soon, uh, I highly suggest it because this is an awesome experience where you get to see the, the orchestra play along with the movie. It's so cool. Um, and I am also, let's see, uh, an avid uh, Indiana Jones fan. I love every movie with Indy. I, I try to collect as much as I can. I have the books. I have some comics, everything. Um, Indy is definitely my favorite character of all time. He surpasses basically anybody in any other film. And uh, you can hear me from time to time actually on the IndyCast, which is a biweekly uh, Indiana Jones podcast. I submit segments on there from time to time. And uh, another one I like is obviously Star Wars. I'm completely obsessed with the wars. I listen to a ton of podcasts about Star Wars. And at one point, I even considered my own Star Wars podcast. Uh, so I am a huge fan. I collect everything, and I listen, and I watch. It's 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 a huge obsession for me. Uh, but really, I could go on and on about film. I love, you know, like I said, all these series so far that I've mentioned, as well as Pirates, anything from Marvel, anything from Disney and Pixar. I'm just really obsessed with film overall. But as far as uh, other dinosaur movies... Um, you know, Jurassic Park is is the main series for me. I'm not. I don't dive too much into other ones too much, but uh, obviously, I would have said The Land Before Time a while ago. Uh, but that has sort of fallen off. You know, as I haven't really seen it in forever. Um, but you know, at this time, I'd really have to say The Good Dinosaur. I know it's kind of a, a bit of a controversial pick there. Um, it wasn't really that highly praised as a film, but you know what? I've really liked it. I don't care what anybody says. You know, some of the best parts were actually um, the visuals. I thought the 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 most realistic looking backgrounds with with these cartoony dinosaurs on it. It was really compelling. I really really liked that look. And also, you know, the story. It certainly hooked me. It you know, despite its flaws. Of course, there were some flaws and some weird scenes here and there, but. I really, really like the story, and it definitely hooked me. As for your third question here, uh, what's the most terrifying moment from the series for me? I'd have to say it's from The Lost World, and I think it's the long grass uh, into the compound sequence. It's pretty terrifying. And I like to think of it as if I would put myself in that scene. Which scene would be the most terrifying? And to me, that long grass compound scene is, is pretty terrifying, you know, if I was the one running through that field or running, you know, to try to hide in that compound there. You know, not knowing what's in that long grass and just seeing people get taken out left and right, hearing those squeals, seeing the tails flare up, um, and then moving on to the compound where the, you know, the animalistic wild raptors, they attack Ian, they attack uh, Kelly and Sarah together. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty scary. Um, those raptors just seem, to me at least, so ruthless and uh, probably scarier than any of the other raptors in, a, in the movies. They, they just really seemed like they were 100% out for blood the entire time. There was no stopping them. Um, you know, because they'll break through glass, they'll dig, you know, under a building, they'll try to climb roofs. Uh, there's, there's no stopping them. Um, well, unless you know gymnastics, I guess. That, that's the only way to stop a raptor, apparently. Um, but really, um, I think that's probably the scariest one. It's the most frantic. And uh, yeah, so that's my most terrifying scene. You know, at least for now. Who knows? That might change soon. Thanks again, man, and I hope to hear from you again soon. This voicemail is from Pierce. Let's take a listen. Hey, I have a question about a line of dialogue from uh, Jurassic Park. After uh, Wayne Knight, as Dennis Nedry, gets hit by the Dothosaurus, the first time, he says something like, I hit, and then he wipes his glasses off. But I'm not really sure what he says, and I don't think the there's not a, there's not a caption for it in closed captioning. And there's not a line of dialogue for that part in the script either. And I was wondering if anybody else had noticed that and was wondering what uh, Dennis Nedry was actually saying in that moment right after he gets hit the first time. Uh, thanks. Bye. Thanks for the call, dude. Um, I went ahead and I listened to that segment to hear just exactly what you were talking about because the line didn't come right to my mind when you brought it up. Um, and you know what? Let's, let's actually just take a listen to that moment in the film. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, did you catch that? Uh, let me let me actually play it again here and here. Why not here? Okay, so uh, in this section of the scene, which I'm sure you can mostly uh, visualize right away, Dennis just got the venom shot at him for the first time right after he fell on the ground. You know, he quickly turns around, gets up, and moves himself around the Jeep store, um, only to get spit on once again. Uh, so anyway, Pierce's question is, what is Nedry saying in that moment? Um, after careful consideration, I've decided he actually says nothing. Really, I think that's it. I think uh, I think Dennis kind of just is making noises, gasping for air as he attempts to reach that Jeep. And uh, like you said, there's no caption in that moment. And I listened over and over and over and basically realized that he says nothing at all. Yeah, I know that's probably a little disappointing, but uh, hopefully that answers the question for you, man. I'm glad you brought it to my attention because now I'll never not be able to hear that again. Thanks, Pierce. This last one is from Sharon. Let's check it out. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your podcast. Um, this is Sharon Nemeth. Um, I've tried a few times doing this, but I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> now you're stuck with me. Um, I actually had one thing to say about Jurassic Park, and that was in the first movie, which I loved to death, um, Dennis. I don't remember his last name, even though I watch it re- religiously. He g- got rid of that dino DNA that was in that shaving cream container, right? Well, when it was in the mud, getting covered, wouldn't that classify as being a fossilized? Or did anything happen to that? Just a little fact. I was just wondering. Um, I love all movies. None of them have really disappointed me except for the third one. But we won't get into that one at all. No, 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 no. But (laughs) I'd like to know what kind of... um, not what kind, but what animal do you guys like? I love the T-Rex. That that baby can do no wrong to me. No, no wrong. She's smart. She's just very, very slow. So just remember that. She's smart, just slow. All right. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your podcast. This is Sharon Nemeth. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and it'd be really cool just to hear me at all. I don't know how this works, <laughs> as you can tell. All right. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Hey, Sharon. Welcome to the club here at the Jurassic Park Podcast. We always love welcoming new people to the show. Um, As for your question, I don't really think we can classify those embryos in the Barbasol can as fossils just yet. Um, So, of course, I went over to Wikipedia to give you a bit of a time frame. Um, And Wikipedia gives an arbitrary time period of 10,000 years for something to become fossilized. So, since we're really just talking about 23 years, I think it's safe to answer no to that one. See, the Barbasol can is a huge point of contention for many fans, but the real problem with trying to resurrect that storyline is with the fact that that can can only hold, hold those embryos for up to 36 hours. So it's not too likely that anyone found them and salvaged them in time uh, to save them. You know, at least not in the film can. You know, the Telltale game, I'm not sure if you played that or not. You should. It's a, it's a great game. That one actually touched upon that can and uh, what happened with it. So definitely go check that one out if you want to see more. As for my favorite animal from the series, um, I'd love to go with the T-Rex and the Raptor. You know, they're, they're staples. They're huge. They're awesome. But I've slowly come to remember that my favorite is the Brachiosaurus. They are such um, gentle, giant creatures. And the first look at the dinosaurs that we actually get to see in the series... I I love that basically every media they're depicted with these giant smiles on their face. It's really hilarious to look them up if you just Google Brachiosaurus. Basically every picture is just a smiling giant dinosaur. Um, I absolutely love those things. They're huge and uh, I, I would certainly experience that same sense of wonder that the cast did in the film. So thanks again, Sharon, for the call, and hopefully we'll hear from you again soon. So that about wraps up our listener segment this week. If you want to get in touch with us here at the podcast, you can head to our website and fill out our contact form to send us a message. And uh, you'll find that at JurassicParkPodcast.com, or you can give our voicemail line a call. That number is 732-825-7763. We hope to hear from you. Where's Aunt Claire? 7 o'clock tomorrow night on the East Dock. Make sure he gets it right. 
but it's alive. And everyone on the planet is going to line up to appreciate it and everything done. People would say they could see the fleas. Oh, I could see the fleas. Mummy, can't you see the fleas? Are, are these characters uh, auto erotic? I don't know. Come on! So we've been promoting it for weeks now, but our hashtag Jurassic Giveaway Contest has closed. And I have the winners. Let me remind everybody really quick, we are giving away a Blu-ray copy of The Good Dinosaur and a standard DVD copy of Jurassic World. So I gathered all the contestants from iTunes throughout the various countries that people entered and I came up with our two winners. Now the way I did it was to combine all the contestants into a random generator that picked the winners. So really I had no hand in the choices. And the next step that I did was I clicked the randomizer button six times. You know why? Well, six times for the month of June. And uh, let's do a drum roll here. The winner for the Jurassic World DVD was iTunes user The Seeking Disciple. Um, and let's go over here to the other DVD. The winner for the Good Dinosaur Blu-ray was iTunes user Maru TNF. So congratulations to both those users. And I can't wait to ship out these DVDs. So The Seeking Disciple and Maru TNF. You need to contact me within two weeks or else a random generator will spin again. So today's episode is July 11th, 2016. You need to respond by July 25th with all your information to get the DVDs. So I think that's a reasonable enough amount of time. So you have to head to our website, fill out our contact form and let us know your information. At that time, we'll give you the scoop on how to confirm your account for the win. So congrats again to those two winners. Uh, Thank you to everybody who submitted the reviews and tagged their posts with hashtag Jurassic Giveaway. Sorry you guys didn't win, but we really, really appreciate all the great feedback and interest in the contest. And this is our way of giving back to you. Thanks for listening to the 58th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'd like to thank everybody who wrote in or called the show over the past few weeks. Travis, Jesse, Sharon, Pierce, and Scorpio Dino 16, thank you so much for being great listeners. Hopefully over the next few weeks we'll get even more people to contribute and call in or write in just like they did this week. Of course, I gotta congratulate them one more time, the winners of our giveaway, The Seeking Disciple and Maru TNF. Make sure to reach out to claim your prizes. If you want to interact with us, we do most of our work over on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod. We're also on Facebook, at facebook.com slash Jurassic Park Podcast, and our Instagram handle is at Jurassic Park Podcast. You can listen to us via iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Podomatic, YouTube, or wherever else podcasts are found. So make sure to subscribe to automatically get new episodes every week. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on iTunes or a great review wherever you listen to the podcast. It will seriously help our rankings and make it easier for fans like you to find us. We're usually spotted commenting on the Jurassic Park subreddit as Jurassic Park Podcast. Don't forget to check out JurassicParkPodcast.com for all the links you heard here today. If you want to get a hold of us, you can email us with any news stories, MP3s, segment ideas, top fives, or comments to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. Or you can submit questions directly on our website contact form. If you'd like to record something for the show, send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. If you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail line a call and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening, and enjoy. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.